my career is over. <laughs> my career is over. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a rookie. This is a disaster. I am Crystal Joy and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am an actress, writer, and founder of Blue Room Productions. I post vlogs, behind the scenes commentary on my projects, and my films. But before this video was over, make sure you hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date. So in today's video, I wanted to share some behind the scenes commentary on my second short film, Behind the Silence. I wanted to talk about three things that went wrong and three things that went right. So Behind the Silence is a short film about a young couple, Bradley and Paula, who are struggling with the diagnosis of their son's autism while trying to maintain their marriage and keep their family a unit. Being that Behind the Silence was a 16 page script, I wanted to bring on extra help, mainly a producer. I didn't have a producer for Crumble, so I wanted to avoid certain mistakes that I made. So I went to a networking event while I was in Chicago and that's where I met my producer, Sam George. We clicked really well and from that moment on, her and I were in pre-production for six months. Six months is a long time to be in pre-production for a short film. Normally it's half that time, but it actually got pushed back twice because of financial issues. So being that we were in pre-production for six months, I was super confident that we had covered all of our tracks, dotted all of our I's. There was no room for mistakes, so I thought. It wasn't until the week of the shoot that everything went haywire. The first thing that went wrong was our sound guy decided to drop out of the project. I kid you not, a few days before the shoot, we were shooting on Friday and Saturday and Sunday. He dropped out, I think it was either Monday or Tuesday, and no one expected it. No one really understood why. He was, he was with us throughout the entire pre-production phase. He was at the meetings. He was there, so we couldn't understand what his reasonings were. But he definitely burned some bridges, especially because some of the crew he was friends with and they brought him on because they trusted that he would do the job. So we had to pull in a bunch of favors and hire three different people to do sound. Even though it was a bit messy, it honestly worked out. But the fact that he dropped out the week of the shoot, and honestly, these things are gonna happen. This is not the first time that I've had someone, a part of the cast or crew drop out before. You figure it out you rework things you have to go around things sometimes or just work with it in all honesty the second thing that went wrong was my phone decided to stop working no idea why apparently there was a network issue with my carrier so i wasn't able to dial in or dial out now mind you i was transportation meaning i had to pick up and drop off cast and crew i had to use my producer's phone because i had no way of contacting them I needed a GPS and I had to call them. So I had to leave my producer at the location. It was the weirdest thing. That was a mess. I don't even know why that was such a mess. So the third thing that went wrong was I had to take my co-director to the ER. So I pick up my script supervisor and my co-director and my co-director gets in the car and she does not look well. So as we're driving, she's like, Crystal, no. I can't go on set. I do not feel good. So I drop her off at the ER. I stay there with her, help, help her get checked in. As I'm driving to set, my mind is going in so many different directions because I'm thinking to myself, this was not in the plan. Me having to direct was not in the plan. We had already agreed that I was gonna you know, fall back as far as being a director and just be the actress and focus on that and let my director be the director. And I'm, I'm just driving the car and I'm thinking to myself, what am I gonna do? I already have so much on my plate. I'm the executive producer, I'm the lead actress, and I'm just feeling like I'm everything else sometimes, even though I have a crew helping me. 
I still have all of this stuff to think and worry about. I don't want to be the director right now. I don't want to be a director at all. As I'm driving, my script supervisor says, maybe this is just a test. A test to see if this is what you really want to do as far as being a filmmaker goes. And I'm thinking to myself, but this is a really big test and I don't wanna be a director. I wanna be an actress and a writer, a producer, but I have no intentions or desires to get behind the camera and direct anyone. I don't know what I'm doing. I didn't know what I was doing. So we get to set and I just had to do it. Not for sure how good of a job I did, with the help of my producer and my script supervisor, it got done. It was a rough day. It was a rough day. There was so much going on in that environment. Things were a bit unorganized and out of place. And at times it, it, at times it felt like we were rushing. And honestly, we were because we were trying to beat the daylight. We had lost a lot of time because I had to drop her off at the ER. And then the location we were at was my best friend's house. She comes home and she's like, I'll just be in the room. Because we took longer than expected, they had to come home and go to sleep. <laughs> so we're shooting while they're in the room sleeping. She had to go to bed and work in the morning. Her son had school in the morning. So we're shooting, trying to be quiet, but still get everything that we need. A madhouse is an understatement of what that day felt like. It was an understatement and people were stretched. We were also in overtime. It was more than an eight hour day. It was like a 10 or 12 hour day, I think. That day was the roughest. Now after that, it was smooth sailing. I kid you not. It was like nothing almost ever happened, maybe. <laughs> My director was okay. Um, she came out of the hospital, was at set the next shoot day, and it was a beautiful day. That day went so smoothly. And you would have never known that the day I directed, it was a real show. <laughs> I remember being on set and a part of me felt embarrassed just because I didn't want to look like I was unprepared or I didn't do my work because I did. And I just remember just feeling like my career is over. <laughs> My career is over. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a rookie. This is a disaster. Here I am trying to direct and be the actress and nothing is going as planned. Those six months went down the drain. So I thought, you know, and I just, I felt like I looked unprofessional. <sighs> Things did not pan out the way I had hoped they would or in the way that I had prepared for them to be. I felt tested beyond my limit. And at one point, I didn't think this film was going to get finished. We didn't get a lot of shots that we wanted. We lost a lot of time just because of things outside of our control. I didn't think it was gonna get finished. And I thought to myself, what am I gonna do if this does not get done? I did my best, like I said, and I, Understanding that you have to be compassionate with yourself and, and give yourself grace for what you don't know. That's just the truth. And just a side note, but Mercury retrograde was happening during that time. If you don't know what that is, just look it up. But we blamed it on the stars. <laughs> All the things that went wrong, we blamed it on the stars. Just look it up. <laughs> so the first thing that went right was this was a crew of a cast and crew of 16 people half of those crew members were women yes that made me feel so proud i remember the day i had to direct and i'm sitting there and i'm looking around and it's all women mainly women in key positions my script supervisor was a woman my production design hair and makeup two of the sound people were women, me, my producer. I felt really proud and I felt like I did my job by bringing more women on to set. I felt grateful to have that energy around me, you know? 
and I was really intentional about wanting to bring women on this set. I, Cause I didn't want to work with just dudes all the time. You know, I, I, I didn't. And so I felt really proud that they were there. Their energy was needed, you know, and they, they worked so hard. They really did. I was just so grateful to them. You know, you hear a lot of people talk about there being this unequal ratio of men and women on set. And I wanted to be a part of the solution. I wanted to be a part of contributing in a way. Women were honestly running that set. So the second thing that went right for us was our child actor, Harlem Hervey. The director, Chan, did an excellent job of directing him and catching him in his natural element versus trying to get him to do certain things. None of us had worked with kids before, but we understood that working with children could be a very unpredictable experience. But my co-director did an excellent job of directing our child, my son, in this project. She just allowed him to be himself and she caught him in his natural element of just being a little boy versus trying to direct him. Harlem really picked up on nonverbal cues because he didn't really have a lot of dialogue, but it was his nonverbal cues that really made such an impactful performance. He just became very intuitive. He was able to adapt his performance to the nature of the set. This is a dramatic short film, and so his performance changed throughout the day and he would do certain things that we wouldn't expect him to do or even understand but because of that it made the process of directing him especially for Chan very easy. So the third thing that worked for us was the topic of discussion. Even though this was a project circling around autism the point of view was from the perspective of a marriage. Even though the antagonist and this project was the circumstances, not so much a person, I just wanted to dive into how a household or a marriage is affected when raising a child with special needs. And I chose autism because you don't hear much about it. And I was very curious to know what autism was. So I really was just proud of this topic of discussion and it being a love story, seeing how this marriage was before they had a child and you know just hoping and hoping that this couple makes it through you know even though there were all these things that kind of felt like this wasn't gonna get done I had a group of people that really worked so hard that really brought a hundred percent of themselves to this project I could not have made this project by myself everyone really stood out everyone gave a hundred percent of themselves to this project and I couldn't have done it without them. So behind the silence cost me $5,000. At that time I was working a temp job and I was taking money out of my checks every week and putting it to the side. I did do an Indiegogo campaign, tried to raise some money, but unfortunately I did not raise much. So I had to fund 99% of this project. This was actually my second attempt at making Behind the Silence and I applied for grants but I wasn't awarded anything. So I put it to the side because, you know, trying to get grants can be challenging. You don't always know where to look. You know, the goal is not to always fund my own projects. The goal is to raise capital, to receive money from other outside sources to get the funds to make the projects. I have been on the journey of trying to get outside funding resources and it has not always worked in my favor. I don't always want to, I don't want to fund my projects because I still have to live my life. So if, but if anyone knows of any grants that I could benefit from, please leave them in the comments section below. It would help me out a great deal. It's one of those shoots where you don't realize what it is you didn't know until you do some other projects and you go back and be like, oh, I should have done that then. For something as um, contained as this, as small as this is crew wise and you know, with like shooting days, I don't know as much as I thought I did. So Behind the Silence was not only one of the first things that I 
produced, uh, especially just coming to Chicago, but it was one of the first things that my production company produced. And it was definitely um, a learning experience of a film shoot. You think there wouldn't be so many, you know, obstacles to overcome, but you know, that was one of the first shoots that even though it was smaller um, and, and in some ways kind of felt like that in-between stage of, ooh, fresh out of school, but before we get on a bigger scale, th there were still a lot of interesting situations that popped up. You know, we decided to work with SAG after talent for the first time and didn't know that paperwork as well as I thought I did. <laughs> um, and those are legitimate contracts. And, you know, if you mess that up, that's money out of production's pocket. <laughs> a little harsh to say, but a slap in the face where it's like, there's still a lot more for you to learn. And on something that is really this manageable um, or should be this manageable, there's still a lot for you, meaning me, to learn. Having moved forward and done a lot of other projects on a variety of scales, um, I also learned how important it is to, you know, what positions you can eliminate and what positions are really, really important to have, or at least you know, if you have someone doing dual positions, making sure that they're people who really understand what those positions entail and not just someone who is wearing too many hats and spreading themselves thin. Is there a way that we could get um, more of these roles filled and still pay people, but maybe figure out how to pay people, um, everybody getting a same day rate. So it means that we have more people on set to make it run more smoothly. Um, knowing what questions to ask on a tech scout. You know, that sounds kind of funny, but before, I feel like I would go and be like, oh, this room looks good. Oh, I can see the shot kind of set up here. And oh, this makes sense. And not think about little things like, well, where's talent going to be sitting? You know, we can't all sit in the living room. We can't all sit in the kitchen. Where are they going to be dressed up at, like dressing up? Oh, they can't all be in the bathroom because there's, there's too many people. You know, there's just a lot of learning experiences in the sense of, okay, you're on your way to being a producer, but you're not quite a producer yet. Um, you still have quite a few things to learn. To that end, I made some really great relationships with crew members I had never worked with before, with uh, uh, equipment houses that I didn't really get to talk to before and get to know. So that was, I think of that project, that was a really beautiful benefit. But still entered in festivals. We still had a premiere showing and invited everyone to it. There were things that, of course, you do right, that you try to do right with what you have, but you look back and realize oh, I could have done this, this, and this much better. And sometimes that doesn't happen until well after the fact. Um, but, you know, it was, Behind the Silence was, and will always be one of those films that I look back fondly on and just kind of remember the, the learning experiences that I had that I'm very, very thankful for that happened then and not on something else much bigger, on a much bigger scale. Thank you guys so much for tuning into today's video. To watch Behind the Silence, click the link in my description box and don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button. I'll see you next week.